Hi there, Simon from simonwood.com. A uh, couple of red burgundies in front of me. Um, one, uh, f no, nothing from the uh, the sexy bit, the Cote d'Or, uh, but uh, wines from the regions either side of that. So I've got a, um, in, in Chablis, there, there isn't any red Chablis, but what they've got uh, up, that, up that neck of the woods is Ironcy, 100% Pinot Noir. This is the 2013 Simone Fevre. Let's dig into it. Now it's a bit weird. Um, the, there's, there's part of it that reminds me of Battenberg, uh, you know, almond and, and strawberry jam, but there's another part of it that reminds me of uh, some wine I once made from a kit, uh, which isn't necessarily a positive. It smells, um, yes, it smells not, um, not fine, let's just put it that way. Yeah, it's almost like there's a part of it that, that, that in order to try and flesh it out, They've um, tried to get as much air in there as possible to release the aromas, and a bit of it's just gone slightly oxidised. Um, not, not great. Hey. Uh, let's see what the second one's like. Uh, so this is Mercury uh, from La Tour de Brulee, B R U W L Y, and it says on the bottom, Eleve et mise en bouteille par, par R P F, which I think is Rue Père et Fils. Uh, there it's a uh, uh, a domain stroke negotiant uh, in, in the Cote d'Or. I think they're based in Santa Bal or somewhere like that. So this is Mercury. Champ Pio, that's the name of the vineyard. La Tour de Bruy is the, uh, is the name that they put to uh, to the producer. But as I say, Rupert Aphis. And this smells a bit more conventional. It smells still smells quite tight. Um, they, both of these 2013s, uh, they, they, uh, which are for red burgundy, it's on the young side. Uh, it feels like it needs to, to flesh out. So I'm getting bits of plum, I'm getting slightly baked um, red berries, um, and uh, a little touch of something almost iron-like. Warm, round, it's like ever, just good rustic. Yeah, this uh, slight, ever so slight pruny edge to the, uh, to the plummy berry fruit. And then there's this earthy tannin that comes through. Um, yes, it's a wine that you wouldn't want to sit and drink by itself. Um, it feels like a wine that's still got a lot of uncurling to do. Uh, what I notice with a good red burgundy, you get to the last, uh, last glass of the bottle and you think, whoa, this is fabulous, I wish I'd kept all the rest of it until this time. So, um, yeah, I think if you've got some of this at home, Give it a chance to, uh, to, uh, for, for the air to get to it, because it really does make a difference. I'll give it another swirl and see how much of a difference that makes. Yeah, it's slowly uncurling. And um, at the moment, that, I was talking about the iron edge. That's quite prominent. And this fruit just seems to be just going, ah, slowly relaxing and stretching its arms. Uh, and I think an hour from now, that's going to be pretty good. As for the first one... Not sure whether that, that will ever be pretty good, but hey, can't win them all. See you soon.